Devils by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Dramatized by Melissa Murray. Episode one. Let me be the first to congratulate you. And to do that, you have to rush into the room without knocking? The whole town is agog, a buzz in a ferment of whatever it is. It's the very best news in the world. It's true, isn't it? Are you going to stand there panting like a horse? A horse? You had such long, elegant legs once. Like a horse, not like a donkey. My dear Mrs. Stavrogin. Yes? Nikolai is coming home. He's coming home at last. What do you mean, at last? Do you think it was his choice to stay away? No, of course not. I mean, I meant until now. He isn't the first good man to be put under suspicion, as they say. You should know all about that, Mr. Verkovyensky. He is a young idealist. I was a young idealist. I still am, at heart. Are you going to sit down like a rational creature? What's wrong? You're not as happy as I thought you'd be. How did you hear the news about Nikolai? Gossip, I suppose. The town is full of it. And the governor's wife is the worst gossip of them all. Everyone is saying it's marvellous he's coming home. Just what this dull, dead backwater needs. Fresh blood. That's a rather unpleasant expression, isn't it, when you come to think of it? Idiots. Fresh thinking. That's better. He has been everywhere in Europe. He will have all the latest ideas, the latest insights. He was such a lovely boy. I am proud to think that, in my small way, as a tutor, I imparted some of my Sit own... Sit down, deep... will you? You're upset. Why would I be upset that my son, my son whom I love, is coming home? I'm not an unnatural mother, am I? No one is as kind as you. No one. And you know, of course, he is bringing your son with him. Why didn't you mention that? Uh, yes. I knew he's coming too. It's wonderful. You've heard from him? No, no, not directly. They are the dearest of friends, by all accounts. Everyone says so. We have given them the example, we too, with our lifelong friendship. An example of what, I wonder? I can see very clearly that you are worried by something. Uh, no, it, don't glare at me. And what do you suppose that Piotr will make of you, his father? Will he think you old-fashioned? Ridiculous. Will he look round at this provincial little Russian town and think it's all pitiful? Oh, you mustn't imagine such things. Nikolai will love his old home. I am sure I know he would have come home sooner if he could. I have no intention of discussing any of that with you. He's my son. I asked you here to talk about something else. Well, here I am. Ask. How can you spend so much money? Tailors, wine merchants and hundreds every month on those evenings of yours. Inviting every half-baked lunatic in the town to spout seditious nonsense standing on the rugs I paid for. Some aren't even invited. This German boy came and insisted on reading his 20-minute poem on brotherly love in the original German. I wanted you to host an intellectual soiree where serious men could discuss the issues of the day here in our little town. The tone, liberal and enlightened, which God knows is needed given the governor's wife and her vulgarity. You were supposed to be a beacon. Instead, late night singing and seditious nonsense. Some of the young men are... Well, dear young men, we must make allowances. Allowances? I have made you too many allowances. When Nikolai is home, I, I will obviously conduct matters on earth. I'm more. going to make a proposal to you. It will surprise you. Thank you. Why are you thanking me? We, uh, it's a habit of mine, Mrs. Tavrogan, to thank you. Are you offended? I'm happy to help you. I have not forgotten who you are. I still admire you, of course. But the way you live, it cannot continue. I owe it to the man who wrote those wonderful, passionate essays that took the whole of Petersburg by storm. Uh, Twenty-five years ago. I owe it to him to look after you. I can't, absolutely can't bear to see you becoming a figure of fun, a, a joke. You must be taken in hand. To put it bluntly, you must be married. What? That is my proposal. And I would be very disappointed to hear you disagree with me. Daria will make a wonderful wife. She is shrewd, practical, economical, and a good, grateful girl 
who will be overjoyed to have her own household and husband to manage. Daria? Your companion, Daria? But she is a child. She's 27 or 28, 25. She will be good to you. She is a kind girl, reserved but kind. Please, Stepan, my dear old friend, agree. She will leave my household with a handsome dowry. You will be an independent man. Yeah, with a wife half my age. I thought you didn't want me to be a laughing stock. You're thinking she's a peasant. I beg your pardon. Oh, the hypocrisy. All those fine words about equality and fraternity and so on, but when it comes to it, you won't marry a girl of peasant stock. I don't understand you. I don't understand this. She, of course, when she knew of my wishes, agreed at once. Miss Daria and I have said nothing but the most common pleasantries to each other in our whole lives. And why would you bother to say anything of importance to a peasant girl? Perhaps I had better go home. Perhaps you had better. But before you go, Daria, before you go, I would like to see you insult this poor girl to her face. Daria. I'm here, Mum. Knocking on doors has gone out of fashion, I see. Daria, Mr. Stepan Verkovyensky wishes to speak to you. My God, my God, my God. What, what did you say? What did you say to her? I couldn't speak. I couldn't say a word. I found that I had taken her hand in mine, the way a drowning man will clutch at anything. I, I babbled. I, I think I mentioned Voltaire. I spoke of the supreme nobility of the Russian people, in terms that would have embarrassed a child of eight. I told her that her people, her people, were the soul, spirit and future of the entire human race. And I walked out of Mr. Stavrogan's house, an engaged man. <sighs> If you feel the least inclination to punch me to the floor, don't hesitate. The poor girl. Yeah, the poor girl. But what of me? How am I treated? It isn't important how we're treated. Yes, well, uh, but I thought in your circumstances, in your very difficult circumstances... I loved my fiancé. That's all very well, Rodinsky. But running off to Moscow with that soldier... He was a veteran, a brave man who fought in battle. Well, that's not all he was. Gambler, drunkard. But I don't want to discuss your situation. I, I don't want to pain you. The bonds of marriage are a tyranny. I won't have a boy like you lecture me on free love. Tonight's gathering must be cancelled. I can't face it. If you cancel, then everyone will come. Even the ones who weren't thinking of coming will come. I drink too much. Mr. Verkombinsky, if I could just say one thing. Promise me you will never tell her. Never tell Miss Daria that you forgive her. I won't. Why would I? What do I have to forgive her for? When I found out that Sophia was seeing, meeting that soldier, I said the most magnanimous things to her. It just incensed her that a man of my principles, my so progressive views on the woman question, thought suddenly that it was my place to judge her, to comment on her actions, to... the moral vileness of it. Forgive her. What are you talking about? Do you know something about Daria's past? Don't even ask that question. You have no right to ask that question. It's just gossip. What past do I have to forgive? What do you mean? What have you heard, Virginsky? Ah! that art so green shall soon be rosy red, my blood the hue supplying. I drink the first glass sword in hand, to him who for the people's love lies dying. Now quickly comes the second draught, and that shall be to freedom quaffed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A German boy again. I suppose we should be gratefully translated at this time. Or perhaps not. Let's get out of here before he starts up again. Tell me, do you think anyone knows? I mean, about my... my engagement. Have you picked up anything? Putin is here. His kook is cousin to Mr. Rogan's coachman, so... Oh, God! Where is he? I must get away. God, here I am, reduced to hiding in my own house. 
Oh, what verse, what noble feeling. I hear congratulations, Lord, oh, dear man. Hug and kiss, yes. Oh, hug and kiss <laughs> your old friend, the Putin. I know exactly what you're going to say. Don't tell a soul. Keep discreet. Do not blab about it. Private matter. Very, very private matter. I know, I know. Personally, I'm dumbstruck. Graves, I'm so silent. Yes, I know I can rely on you. But the question is not what this little lot thinks, it's what Shartoff says, what Shartoff does. Daria's brother, but a very, very different kettle. Surly, sulky, scowly Shartoff. He's not the smooth call Daria. Face like a boxing bag and fists to match. He's not here yet, is he? I definitely heard he was coming tonight. Oh, God, yes. I haven't even thought of that. You know that Shartoff once slapped our Nikolai, our Nikolai Stavrogin, in the face, right across the face. It was when they were in Petersburg, or in Switzerland, somewhere. They were such friends, such comrades, as the young people say. It was a hard blow, and Nikolai was positively knocked to the floor. People asked, why didn't Nikolai call him out? After all, it wouldn't be the first man he killed in a duel, if rumours are to be believed. Can you imagine Shartov with a pistol? A bear with an embroidery needle. But Nikolai didn't call him out. Was it because the accusation was true, he actually was sleeping with Shartov's wife? Or because, radical politics aside, it isn't quite the dumb thing to shoot a peasant? A chap whose father was owned by your father. What do you think? I think you are a nasty mosquito. Mm, they said the same about Socrates, that he was a gadfly. I know my classics as well as you do, even if I've never been to Petersburg. I have no wish to continue this conversation. Nikolai is, and here we must lower our voices. Nikolai Stavrogin, that hero, that inspirational figure, does appear to have a tenderness for the ladies. Uh, listen, listen. The governor's wife is telling everyone that Daria, that Daria, when she went to Switzerland with old Mrs. Stavrogin last year, succumbed to his, to Nikolai's charms. Can you imagine? Can you imagine as well how our Shartoff feels about that? His wife and his sister. Virginsky. Grab this man by the hair and throw him out. And of course, Mrs. Stavrogin is determined that her son, her lovely boy, shall marry no one but Lisa Tushina, the town's lovely heiress. Two rich, lovely, lovelies together. So, Daria must be married off too sweet and in a hurry. Can't have a scandal. Can't have stories about Nikolai helping himself to the help, if you get me. What do you think of that? I like a man with an opinion. Tell me, what do you think of that? <laughs> You knew this. You knew this. This is what you were hinting at. Oh, good God. What am I going to do? So, my humiliation is complete. I sit here staring in the mirror at an old man with a neck like a crepe bandage. Drunk. <laughs> of course, drunk. After hiding from that lout Shatov in the summer house half the evening. No, he isn't a lout. He's a passionate soul who believes in the perfectibility of man. Who believed in the perfectibility of man. Till one day he didn't. How does that happen? How does one lose one's faith? We old warriors must keep the torch alight and aloft while the young falter. That, above all else, is my mission. Oh, what nonsense I talk. If I had money, I could click my fingers in her face. I could say, you will not use me to cover up your son's debaucheries. I could refuse her. Daria's dowry. Oh, if I had that, I could hold my head up. I, I could say to my son, here is the inheritance your mother left you. Every penny of it. We would embrace one another. Everything would be well. You would forgive me. You would understand. You would never know about the money. I did it with the greatest reluctance. But it was a miserable thing to do, and I, I am ashamed. No one can deny that I am ashamed to have, to have, well, even temporarily borrowed. Oh, enough. The world has proved too much for me. That's the truth. I am pitiable. 
But does anyone actually pity me? No. Tomorrow, I will cast it all aside. I will leave this house, this life, this bondage. I will go out into the world with a small knapsack, a Russian wanderer. I will beg for my bread, but proudly. I will let the people, the great Russian people, sustain me. Until at last, in the simple hut of an old, kind peasant, I will breathe my last. I will expire. And then, dead, they will remember me. My books will be reissued, though in foreign editions, probably. Still too strong a medicine for this sickly state. They will flock to my grave. A simple monument with the words, life. Life. I thought much of our radical youth, if that's the best the town had to offer. Why was our host hiding half the night? I heard someone say something about your sister. First, what the hell are you doing here, in this town of all places? Tell me what's going on, Karinov. I hear Stavrogin and his hyena are on their way. Is there something happening? Even if I am no longer a dear comrade, you can trust me. I'm an engineer, Shatov. That's my work. I'm here to build. Hey, gentlemen. Pardon me, gentlemen. Who's that boy? Walk faster. Leave him behind. Leave him alone. So, you're here to build a bridge, and that's all. Hey! Look at me. Who is he? Oh, another young, tender souled little fool with his heart on his sleeve and his head up his ass. Just as we were once. So, Stavrogin coming here at the same time as you. All that's just a coincidence. Thanks. I just wanted... I, I first want to say to Shatov, don't blame poor Stepan Verkovyansky. Blame him for what? Being an old woman's lapdog? I don't care who he marries. I don't care who my sister marries. You can tell him that if you like. He needn't have hidden the lavatory half the night. Secondly, Mr. Kirillov... Uh, Kirillov, I know you come from... Uh, that you are a serious man. And I would like to go on record. I would like to say that I stand ready. I am absolutely prepared to offer my services. Come my... on, Karilov. I can't listen to this declaration of love. I told you we shouldn't have waited for him. Poor lamb. Oh, he has the right to... Well, to make his own mistakes. But they're the same mistakes everyone makes. We all begin full of revolutionary fervor. <laughs> We're going to set the world to rights. So we start by demanding unlimited freedom and end up running an abattoir. You'll have to forgive my old friend. Here's the thing. I thought, when I was young... He's 28. I swore that civilization, this civilization, was a straitjacket, a cruel confinement. Well, yes, it is a straitjacket, and good that it is. Very good. And why? Because we're a fallen race. Mad demented and vicious, almost beyond belief. Only God can save us. Only the most strict, repressive regime, the Tsar, the stinking landlord class, can keep us in check. Foot on the throat. It's the only way. That's very interesting. He's not always as cynical as this. Sometimes he gets very sentimental about us Russians and the Slavic destiny. You're his friend. Do you think Stepan Verkovyansky is serious about marrying my sister? I don't know. It seems to be Mrs. Stavrogin's idea. Miss Daria has said yes. That's what he told me. Is this where you live? It's cheap. If it's cheap, I might try and get a room there myself. Come in and have a drink, Kurilov. <laughs> Captain Lebyadkin, he's on the ground floor with that poor bloody sister of his. I hope that's not Maria's China dog. She loves it. 
She has a hell of a life, poor girl. Shouldn't you... Shouldn't we... What an animal that man is. She's brave. She calls him her footman to put him in his place. He beats her black and blue sometimes. I'll go in and sort this out. I swear to God, if you lay another hand on her... Perhaps I will knock we could meet to talk sometime, Kirillov. Shartov is right. Keep your distance, Mr. Virginsky. are leaking already. Slow down, slow down, for heaven's sake, don't you see? I see. I see you, darling old professor. How many years has it been? Oh, my God. Let me kiss you. T take off your hat. Her. Well, it happens. And you're fatter. Not shorter. It's because I'm taller, you look. What are you up to? Tramping the road at this hour of the morning. Lisa! Of course, Lisa. Entirely grown up. Are you running away from home with that nice red knapsack? Well... He's blushing. Was that the wrong thing to ask? <laughs> I haven't seen you for so long. But we were always friends as children. I mean, when I was a child. Have you forgotten me? No one could forget you, <laughs> Lisa Tushina. No one, my dear. That's because I have a face like a Kalmuk. Step savage, but memorable. Is everything all right? What are you doing out at this hour? Well, to be honest, and after all, that is a man's highest duty. I didn't sleep well. I was feeling a little distressed over <clears throat> events. And I thought, I wonder what it would be like to run away. So I packed a few things in my nice red knapsack and decided to see what it felt like. I'm still a child, as you can see. I'm so sorry to hear you're troubled. Can you tell me about it? Oh, it's just a silly game I was playing with myself. My boots hurt and I'm hungry. Time to go home. <laughs> so, tell me how you are. Tell me all your news. What a treat it is to see you. I met your son in Switzerland, did he tell you? We write to each other sometimes. Now it is my time, to be honest. I don't like him. I have to tell you that straight away, but probably that's because he despises me, rich girl. Also, the rumors about Nikolai and I are nonsense. We met three times, and on two of those occasions, they were hardly occasions. On two of them, he didn't say a word to me or anyone else. It didn't seem rude. I don't know why. Well, I think it's wonderful that you will all be at home at the same time. It will liven this town up. It's just a coincidence. I had planned to come home months ago. Uh, you must say that if you hear anyone talking about it. Suggesting things. I don't want you to run away with your knapsack, Professor. I need you. I have nowhere to run to. No fool like an old fool. Unless it's a young one. Can we have breakfast in your house? I'm getting married. That's what's happened. That's what I was worrying about. Are you? Well, that's very good, isn't it? Congratulations! Tell me. You're not happy. It's just surprising. It was a total shock to me. Yesterday morning, I knew nothing about it. It's to Dario Shatova, Mrs. Stavrogan's companion. A very nice girl. I've met her. What do you think of her? Or is that an awkward question? Mm, not awkward, just impossible to answer. I don't know what to say about her, honestly. She's not knowable, at least not to me. I think she looks down on us all a bit, secretly. 
Or at least she keeps herself above the fray. Our Nikolai thinks well of her, it seems. One hears the most extraordinary things about Nikolai. Well, he's a very special young man. What have you heard? His many friendships. One of them is living in the town, apparently. Maria Lebiatkin. People talk about her. Do you know her? To see in the street. Poor girl. She's the sister of that captain. What a nice man. Well, why do you mention her? What is she to do with Nicola? I think I will go and find out. <laughs> I won't come for breakfast, if you don't mind. It is so lovely to see you, Professor. I always called you that, didn't I? I'd better go now before I lose my nerve. Yes. Do you think I should marry Miss Shatter? You should go back to your own house. Have faith. Everything will be all right. We must have faith. Nikolai is an extraordinary man. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. I must have faith. Lisa Tushina. Yeah, I'll read your cards if you like. If people can lie, why not cards? Anyway, what makes you think your future will be so unique and extraordinary that it deserves a reading? You'll marry a man and have children. Three children. That's your fortune or unfortune. Misfortune, I mean. I haven't come to have my fortune told. The brush is on the table next to the bread. Gentle hands. Do you smell of horse? I love horse riding. My mother doesn't like me to do it. Galloping round the town like a mad woman. I loved being in the convent. That's the first thing I tell everyone. That's where they put me after I lost the baby. You had a baby? I think I did. You were all the same, weren't we? Thinking handsome princes will gallop up and rescue us. <laughs> you have your own horse, though. I have nothing but a hairbrush. <laughs> if we were in a fairy story, I would throw the brush on the ground and a huge hedge would shoot up and protect us poor sisters from a cruel world. <laughs> now, come on, love. Can I ask you? No. No, you can't. This is my house. Do you really tell fortunes? I read the cards. I told you that before. If I have a fit or anything, don't throw cold water in my face. I hate that. Are, are you feeling ill? Should I fetch a doctor? My brother fetched me out the convent. He had the authority. I wanted to speak to you about Nikolai. Sometimes. I sit down at breakfast, take a bite of bread, and then, like a blink, it's evening. He was very kind to me. Nikolai, I mean. Not my brother. My brother's a pig. He's a beast. Nikolai used to speak of the future. A wonderful future. He did the same with me. Not mine, personally. Not my actual future. He wouldn't want to talk about that. Too upsetting, no. He talked about the world's future. It's how it could be if people were freed from hunger and stupidity. If the rich were no longer rich and the poor no longer poor. To be honest, I drifted in and out, but it was better than anything. It was the best thing I've ever heard. Full of hope. He was full of hope. He sounded as if he was full of hope. Sometimes he didn't, though. What happened? To what? Is it true that Nikolai sold his estate and gave the money to your brother? Is it true that you're a rich bitch who asks too many questions? I can't believe I said that. I'll try and laugh it off, will you? 
Pretend I'm a bit touched and don't always know what I'm saying. I'm embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Come with me. Come with me now. Fidget. Sorry. Oh, I detest waiting. Where is this fellow? We must get your marriage settled now. I'm expecting Nikolai home within days. Is this Mr. Shatov always late? Perhaps Mr. Shatov is busy. Running off to the factory, telling the men to strike and to starve. Oh, not anymore, apparently. What is he like? Not like Daria? He is a very large young man. What has that to do with anything? Are you afraid he will hit you? Anything is possible. I'm sorry, Mr. This man. Mrs. Stavrogin, I don't know what you want with me. There was no need to ask me here. Let my sister marry who she likes. Daria has a mind of her own. That's all I have to say. Good day. Welcome, Mr. Shatov. If you would be so good as to take a seat. I will ring for Daria to join us, and perhaps we can have a civilised conversation. I want you to know that I have the highest respect, the highest regard for your sister. We all have to make a living one way or another. Is there something you want me to sign or say, Mrs. Stavrogin? Yeah? Is that it? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Sheena, no, it's not a good... Uh, I'm very sorry again, mistress. <laughs> oh, get out. Oh, yes. No, no, not you, Lisa. Lisa, I am always... Dear Mrs. Stavrogin, <sighs> Professor, mm. have I interrupted? Oh, we were just discussing my impending marriage. My dear darling girl, this isn't the most convenient. Can I sit down? I made you walk too fast. Uh, this is my friend, Maria Libyadkin. I had to bring her here, so don't blame me. Don't be cross. You should do up your jacket, shut off. We're with the high-ups now. I beg your pardon? Can I have something to eat? Come sit next to me, Maria. It's about me and Nikolai. That's what this is about. Also, the baby. Who is this creature? Maria Lebyadkin. Half mad, cripple, and sister of a drunken brute. Mm. And you're kinder than you seem. Well, than you seem at this moment, anyway, frowning at me like that. I am very surprised you brought this absolutely mad woman to my house, Lisa. I know. I shouldn't have come. I'm always being called impetuous, but I must have matters made clear. I don't mind anything as long as matters are made clear. Come here, my dear. Let's be honest. My mother and you have a scheme, a plan in which I, I marry your son. And to be honest, why can't we be honest? I... When I met him in Switzerland, I liked him. But I must know certain things. I must know them. People have said he will squander your money on his politics, on printing presses and bombs. I don't care if he does that, if he squanders my money on printing presses at least. I don't care that much about his past, but look at her. Look at her. You must tell me what you know. Otherwise, I will leave here in a moment, go back to Petersburg, no matter what my mother says. My son is much misunderstood. He is kind. It's quite possible he has been kind to this young woman. Of course, gossips will make mischief, lie and spread rumours. The governor's wife, she is the source of all this. She wishes to destroy me. Oh, Lisa, my dear, it's all just malice. Perhaps the poor girl herself believes all sorts of silly things. Look at her. I shouldn't have spoken harshly to her. What is her name? Maria Lipyatkin. Mr. Shatov, will you be so good as to take this young person home? Very happy to go. Come on, Maria. I had hoped to discuss some other matters with you, but another time. You needn't worry, Mrs. Stavrogin. I don't require buying off. As I've said, what Daria does is her business. If she wants me to intervene, I will. I really will. But if she wants to marry this man, let her. Gracious, as always, dear brother. Daria. Uh, Miss Shatova, allow me to wish you good afternoon. 
Are you sure about this, Daria? I will be providing a dowry, a handsome dowry for her. You, Mr. Shatov, <sighs> need feel no concern on that score. I don't. I won't. I wouldn't. Would you explain about me and Nikolai, darling Daria? That's why we're here. Me and Tushina. Miss Tushina and me. Miss Tushina and I. Miss Tushina, how are you? Well enough, thank you. The connection between Maria and Nikolai Stavrogin is simply this. Mr. Stavrogin sold one of his estates. He gave me the money and I have been distributing it in monthly amounts for the last year or so to Captain Lebyadkin in order for him to provide a home for her, for Maria. I don't know anything about any of that. You have gone behind my back. Why? Why would he do that? He loves me. Miss Daria. It is his business to explain, not mine. You're close to him, are you? A close friend? I know what he is and I pity him. You pity my son? Daria, you don't have to answer their questions. Uh, you are his friend uh, and nothing more. I mean, you, you've never been anything more. What are you asking me? No, you have a right to know. Uh, Miss Daria has the right to know. What a filthy imagination I have. I ask because I want to know I am not marrying merely to cover up another man's indiscretions there. Despise me. There are no indiscretions. Oh, I, I disgust not... myself. Bear witness to that, at least. I have enough decency left to completely disgust myself. Give it over, Stepan Verhovyensky. Enough French farce. Ladies and gents, gentlemen, he's home. The master is home just this minute. Here. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid it's just me. Oh. John the Baptist, rather than the main event. What a crowd. Ooh, I wish I'd prepared a few words. Improvise. Mrs. Stavrogin first. Thanks. Thank you for allowing me. Piotr. Pierre. My boy. Can that be you? Clearly it's me. Don't make a fuss. Oh, let me kiss you. <laughs> do you know, I'd rather you didn't. Lisa. Looking lovely. How many years has it been? It's hard to say. Honestly, do we have to go through a scene? I mean, my God. Here I am being welcomed home by the prodigal father. That's a bit of a reversal. Shut off, you bad, bad penny. Not the place I'd expect to see you turn up. A lady's drawing room. Given you a job as a footman, have they? Where is my son? Oh, he'll be here in a moment, dear lady. Just a moment. Can I first thank you for allowing me to stay in your lovely home? You're a grown man. Yes, and I have been for some time. <laughs> he dropped me off with some mad old aunties up a mud road 15 years ago. We only managed the odd get-together since. Haven't we, Dad? I have been an appalling father. <laughs> I love the way that people imagine admitting to bad behaviour absolves them. Will you embrace me? Please. I beg you. In the spirit of reconciliation. Oh, Piotr, to see you, it's inexpressible. Ah, well, let's be grateful for that, at least. Please don't even try to express it. Actually, now I think of it, can I have a quiet word with you outside the room? Excuse me, ladies, I am sorry if it seems impolite to come in and immediately go out again. But otherwise, he'll just go on emotionally erupting in this irritating way. Come on, dear Dad, follow me out. I understand that you despise me. I hardly ever give you a thought. You say that to wound me. Hmm. Human psychology. That's the hallmark of your generation, isn't it? Hand-wringing and high ideals, but the practical work of revolution. Who's to do that while you're fainting in corners? Men like you. The new generation. Men, in some degree, inspired by an older generation. I admire you. I bow my head to you. Well, you're good at flattery. The old lady has you trained to lick and whimper. I can bear that. I can bear that insult. The question is my money. The money my mother left me. Nothing from you in two years. Don't tell me you've spent it all. Don't tell me that. Do you think I ever believed my life would be like this? That I would end up like this? That's no answer. And I will have an answer. I'll call over in a day or two and we can go over the accounts. There. I've spared your blushes in front of your patron. I didn't humiliate you in public, did I? I can, though. Any time. Oh, Master Leon. Oh. Oh, could you take that, please? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Nikolai, there you are. I've been trying to keep everyone entertained, but whatever else I am, I'm not you. Come on. Everyone's here. Nikolai. My old shooter, what a pleasure. Oh, you look well, sir. I don't know what to say. Don't get him started, Nikolai. Don't let him get started talking, <laughs> even if it is all he's good for. <laughs> Let's go in, shall we? Nikolai. A 
Oh, Nikolai, you look so handsome. Doesn't he, Lisa? Miss Trishna, this is a real pleasure. I hope you're well. I'm perfectly well. This young woman, this Maria Libyadkin, what is she to you? I'm his wife. <laughs> I'm his lawfully wedded, sanctified wife. <laughs> don't laugh at her, dear <laughs> Professor. She's not... I really don't want a ridiculous scene. The things these girls say. I know she's unfortunate, but really... Is it by me? That's a very nice dress you have on, Maria. You should wear a shawl. The weather is cold. You must be careful of yourself, Maria. Now, my carriage is outside, and it would give me the greatest pleasure to take you home. See you safely home. Take my arm. Do not take his arm, Maria. Do you think I would harm her? I won't hit you again, never fear. Unless you'd like me to hit you again. Would you? No, thank you. These people. You should have nothing to do with these people, Daria. Take the girl home in your carriage. Now. Do it now and hurry back. We will pretend all this never happened. Are you ready to go, Maria? There is a nice warm rug in the coach. Can I keep it? Of course you can keep it. I'll be back within an hour, Mother. I promise. I am a little annoyed with you, Lisa, bringing this creature here. But young people are to be forgiven. I'm so sorry. I never expected her to say that. <laughs> we won't ever speak of it again. Of any of this. To be frank, we've all been a little mad. What would I do without my calm and quiet little Daria? I, too, succumb to gossip. He is such a handsome, intelligent man, my son. Of course people are drawn to him. Of course, people invent the most ludicrous stories about him. I trust you, Daria. I should never have doubted you. Can we forget about that foolish idea of you marrying Stefan? It's not in the least necessary now. <laughs> not necessary. I should say it wasn't, mottled old fool. We are not wooden pieces to be picked up and dropped down at your whim, Mrs. Stefrocken. Actually, I'd say that's exactly what you are. Would you ring for tea, Miss Daria? I'm a little nervous being in this magnificent house. But I know people think radicals like me just want to burn buildings like this to the ground. But I appreciate elegance and beauty as much as the next man. <laughs> Miss Lisa's giving me a very familiar look. I don't like you. <laughs> and why should you? I'm just a scurrying sorter out of trifles. I'm the one who concerns himself with facts and figures, the nuts and bolts, the ins and outs. I read statistics. I work out the timetable. That's me. Everything useful in the world, but not inspirational. I'm not inspirational. Am I, Miss Tushina? No, you're not. Right, well, time to be serious, I see. Three years ago, we were in Petersburg living a young man's life. Sometimes at the university, some not. Shatov was with us then, and Kurilov. Do you know Kurilov? Yes, he's building a bridge in the town. Oh. <laughs> How very metaphorical of him. So, we were all talking too much, drinking too much, but in love with this country and this people. The great suffering people. Everyone thought, hoped, prayed that change would come, must come. We were naive, optimistic. The right pamphlet written, the right appeal made to the right politicians, the right princes close to the Tsar. This night we were drinking, we were in despair. Captain Lebiadkin was in the company, trailing his poor sister behind him. No one paid the poor girl any attention. Then, one of our number who shall remain nameless began to tease the poor child in a cruel way. Nikolai, on the other side of the room, saw this. In two strides, he was across the room, the man's lapels in his hands, and I personally thought he would kill him. But no. No. He let the man go and began to speak. It was a moment of revelation. Nikolai began to speak. He held her hand and spoke with such tenderness, such determination. A new world, a new life. We could see it. We could actually see it. It would not, could not happen until brave men made it happen. He was stern with us. He told us our lives were forfeit. I knew this was the man I must follow whenever, however, whatever the cost I was to pay. Whatever pain I must inflict on myself and others.
What's wrong with you? What were you doing in my mother's house? Miss Tushina brought me. Hmm. What did happen to the baby? There never was a baby, Mario. That's just a bit of a fairy tale that got lodged in your mind. Are you really a prince, or was that a joke? No, I'm not a prince. I could tell you something else, you're not. What was that? You're not the real Nikolai Stavrogin. You're an imposter. I am an imposter. That's true. But also, I am the real Nikolai Stavrogin. Has you been clever, is it? Yes. Can you be quiet now? Let's imagine I have a headache. Are you angry with me? Not in the least. Poor Maria, hold my hand. Hall. What's he doing? Nothing. He's smoking. Waiting for Nikolai to get back, I suppose. I can't leave without passing him. This isn't how I imagined his homecoming at all, Nikolai's. Oh, it's gone cold. Poor Lisa. All I want is for them to be happy. Can you blame me, a mother, for wanting my son to be happy? I have uttered not one word of blame. I know you. You are thinking blame. You are thinking I would have sacrificed you, married you off to Daria, because I suspected him of having a tenderness towards her. When we were in Switzerland last year, they were always talking together. What were they talking about? Well, we know now. The Lebyatkin girl. There is some other mystery there. But at least Lisa loves him. I think we can be sure of that. Can't we? Oh, I feel like a prisoner trapped in this room. And he must have felt safe to have come home. The authorities must have realized their mistake, yes? Why am I so much to be blamed? Nikolai has a noble nature. Why, he needs to show this in the surroundings of slums and drunkenness of Petersburg, of Vienna and Zurich, I do not know. This is the lesson I have learned today, Mrs. Davrogan. Don't blame others. It is time to blame yourself. How am I to blame? My grief at this moment is self-indulgent, but real. Oh. What kind of a son do I have? He mocked me. I deserve to be mocked. I know that. But... Nikolai was delighted to see me. <laughs> There's no need for you to hover about like this. I'm not going to steal one of the paintings. Oh, and as for this thing, what the hell is this thing? A vase? An urn? Don't touch that. Don't think I could even lift it. Christ, it's ugly though, isn't it? What are you? A footman? You're a bit old for it. An underbutler? You should get her to get you a new coat. You look shabby. Stop leaning against that wall. You'll make a mark. Precisely my intention. Your old dad is a gentleman. He's a French poodle. And you're not supposed to be smoking in the hall. There's a room for that. Yeah. And one for them to eat. Another to sleep in. Another to read in. Oh, and a nice room with a view of the garden to talk piously about the poor in. Your son works in the local factory, doesn't he? How do you know that? I know that because knowledge is power. Right, I need to have a private word with Nikolai. Joking aside, thank you for keeping me company, but you can go now. I don't take orders from you. Off you go. Got Maria home okay? You swore to silence? Or did you just get rid of her? No. Oh, you didn't strangle her and throw her body in the river. I didn't swear I had secrecy. Still wouldn't be a bad idea, the river. But not seriously. Everyone's still in the drawing room. By everyone, I mean your mum and my dad. I had to get out for a bit, the strain on my nerves. What have you been saying to them? I've been intriguing. I want to go to sleep for at least a week. Oh, we've much to do. I have nothing to do. Then you must leave everything to me. Is that what you want? The impression I've given them has been a little unsettling. Mm. What am I? Slightly sinister or too talkative? Or a naive hero worshipping dolt? You find yourself more interesting than I do. Well, the answer is all of the above. That's my disguise. I pretend to be the person I am, which is confusing for everyone. 
including myself. <laughs> I learned that trick from you. Have I told you before how bored I am with this? They expect great things of us. I thought my mother looked frightened of me. I meant the committee, rather than the parents. Still, about them, what we will do, what I will do is distract them. Do you know my father has spent my inheritance? I'm a bloody pauper. Well, that guilt will tie him down. That'll keep him quiet. You know, that's how pathetic this place is. They treat him as a real intellectual here. He's a good man. <laughs> yeah. So we keep them distracted. All of them. Lots of fine words. Very fine words. And then outbreaks of outrageous behaviour. Judiciously outrageous. You know, not all the time. Enough to jolt them every now and again. And all the while, we are planning... I'm not part of this. You are the head and heart of this. The printing press will be here by the end of the week. I will tell Kirillov to find somewhere very secret to store it. We will begin producing material within the week. A heady mixture of scurrilous rumour and revolutionary politics. Well, it'll write itself. I mean, no, it won't, of course. I will write it. Trust me, the committee expects great things of us. I've told them. Yes, I know what you've told them. And I know what they've told me. We have eight definite comrades in the town already. And that'll double in a month. So... While they, our dear liberal older generation, are in ferment with all our goings-on, our scandalous behaviour, outrageous rudeness and sexual shenanigans... It's not too late to call Shadow out for a duel, by the way. Think about that. So while they're in a ferment, mesmerised with all the flashbang fireworks we throw in the air, quietly underneath, not under their feet even, but in the deep dark water like lovely sharks, we will... Excuse me. Why don't you join us, Daria? Hmm? Why don't you? I'm fetching more hot water for the tea. You look ill, Nikolai. This is the microcosm, Nikolai. This is the proving ground. If we can get this sleepy little town in an uproar, they will use our technique as the blueprint for the rest of the country. Is he talking about his committee again? Unfortunately. You. You could have been my stepmother. To think of that, would you have given me little brothers and sisters? What a charming thought. It's not too late to join us. Join the struggle. I would never join you. I can't work out whose side that girl is on. She knows too much. Because I tell her things. But that's because you trust her. I do. She's made me a promise. Mm -hmm. Not the usual one women make to you, though. Hmm? I guess that. So tell me, what's the promise? Please tell me. <laughs> Seriously, Nikolai. You are going to be serious. I will be. I will be the most serious man in the world one day. I'll sit behind my desk, reading reports, signing papers, attending meetings. I will plan the future of this country. We will get the respect we deserve at last. What a glittering dream that is. <laughs> well, that's your business, not mine. Providing the glittering dream. That's your department. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, or rather father and mother, now at last, after a little toing and froing, I am proud to announce that your future, Russia's future, has finally, definitely arrived. Nikolai Stavrogin. In episode one of Devils, by Fyodor Dostoevsky, dramatized by Melissa Murray, Stepan was played by Gary Lilburn, Mrs. Davrogan by Jane Whittenshaw, Piotr by Jonathan Forbes, and Nikolai by Joseph Arkley. Lisa was played by Cecilia Appiah, Maria by Georgia Henshaw, Virginsky by Ian Dunnett Jr., Daria by Charlotte East, Shartov was played by Stefan Adikbola and Kirillov by Hassan Dixon. Musical arrangement of The Birch Tree was by Ian Dunnett Jr. The director was Karl Prekop. And the producer was Mark Beebe. Devils is the last work by Mark Beebe.
who died on the 26th of December 2020. Mark was a prolific and talented producer who made audio dramas for the BBC for over 20 years. He brought wit and clarity to both comedy and drama, to contemporary single plays and returning series like the enduringly popular Pilgrim, to stage plays and classic literature like Primo Levi's The Periodic Table, to poetry like Dante's The Divine Comedy, and to the works of Shakespeare. A natural collaborator, Mark forged strong, creative relationships with actors and writers who returned to work with him again and again, drawn by his humour, insight and generosity. That generosity extended to the mentoring of countless aspiring writers and actors, with whom he shared freely his wisdom and his enduring passion for radio drama. Mark Beebe, director and producer. He will be greatly missed. <laughs>